Hi everyone, Kevin here from Golf Guy Reviews, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you a full review of the Under Armour Speed 4 GTX golf shoes. Now, these are a premium spiked golf shoe from Under Armour that retail in the UK at the moment for £170 and $200 in the US. Now, I've worn these several times out on the course, so this is gonna be my full in-depth review of the shoes. Um, I'm gonna let you know exactly how they feel on feet, as well as how they perform out on the course. So I really hope you enjoyed the video today and let's get stuck in. Now when these shoes first released, we were actually in lockdown here in the UK due to COVID-19. So I've already actually posted a video of when these shoes first released, just going through all the tech in these shoes and giving my kind of first impressions of them. So if you wanna check out the full details of the shoe and everything going on with the shoe, then click that link. I've included the link in the video above. Remember to point to the right side this time, I think, so it's over there. Um, and yeah, so in that video, I go through all the technical aspects of this shoe. I'm not gonna do that in this video today. I'm gonna to briefly cover off the looks and some of the technical features, but this video is gonna be all about how they fit on feet and how they perform out in the real world on the golf course. Now, because the Under Armour Speed 4 is very much a premium spiked golf shoe, really focusing on providing you as much stability and traction as possible throughout your golf swing, it's putting it directly in the firing line of not only the FootJoy Tour X, but also the Adidas Tour 360 XT. So all three of these shows are really targeting the same kind of audience really in regards to the amount of stability and traction and just general high quality of the shoes overall. So I'm gonna do a comparison video of all three of these shoes as well. I haven't filmed it yet, but keep an eye out for it because I'm gonna include it in the link above there and it down in the description once I've done that. But for now in this video, let's just focus on the Speed 4. So first of all, in regards to the design and general look of the shoe, I actually really quite like the look of this shoe. Uh, it is only available in this colorway at the moment. I'm not sure whether they're gonna release more colorways, uh, but you can only get it in this white and gray colorway. Um, and generally, I would say that it's a very kind of clean looking shoe. It is quite busy in regards to all the different textures and the elements that you've got going on with it. Um, and I would also say that it's a very technical looking shoe. There's a lot of technology in this shoe and you can kind of see a lot of it going on from the outside. Personally, I really like the style of it. I think it's quite, you know, uh, tour ready looking. I think it looks quite professional, I suppose, if, you, if that's a way to describe it. Um, and generally, yeah, it's also quite slim and sleek, I found. You can see on the front here, uh, the whole of this upper area, that's the Clarino microfiber upper. Um, and so that is something that Under Armour use on a number of their golf shoes now uh, because it gives a good amount of structure, but it's very good and breathable, which is really, really important. Um, and generally, what I was told as well from Under Armour is it doesn't necessarily break down so much. So with some other golf shoes where they use just a more natural kind of leather material on the upper, uh, they can stretch and give. Uh, really, these have been designed not really to give that much. There'll be a little bit of breaking in with the upper, but not too much in general. One other aspect that I did just want to kind of highlight in regards to the design of the shoe, and that's all the way around the outside, you've got this TPU outsole. You know, normally on golf shoes, you would have foam instead, instead exposed on the shoe. Whereas in this one, it's kind of encased in this TPU. Makes it really, really easy to keep clean. And finally, while we're on the subject of keeping these nice and clean as well, uh, I did want to highlight because of this textile material that you've got here on the laces and the heel area, this bit has marked up a fair bit um, already in regards to the, uh, the rounds that I've used it, and you're gonna get some grass stains, you're gonna get some mud on those. Uh, so, you know, that's just something to be aware of. Let me know down in the comments, what do you think of the look of the Speed 4? Is it for you? Do you like the kind of lines and all of the kind of different textiles that they've got on the front of it? Let me know in the comments. I really hope you're enjoying this review and finding it helpful, so hit that like button if you are. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date on all my latest reviews of golf shoes, clothing and tech right here on Golf Guy Reviews. So before we talk about how these shoes performed out on the golf course for me, let's talk about how they fit and feel on feet. Now the first thing that you're gonna notice when you try it on the Under Armour Speed 4 is how close they feel to your feet. Now Under Armour have put a lot of effort to specifically get that sensation uh, because they really, really want the shoe to fit your feet as well as possible. Now everyone's feet are different, so that's quite a task, I suppose, and you're probably wondering how you're gonna do that. Well, there's a couple of things that Under Armour have done. And the main thing that they've done in regards to feeling in that these shoes fit nice and close to your feet and are gonna fit your feet is by using this 3D technology on the inside of the shoe. So you might be able to just kind of see it there down the tongue and I've got some images as well on the inside of the shoe. Uh, so you've got this 3D kind of pillows effect 
uh, on the inside of the shoe, uh, both on the medial and the lateral side. Um, and also you've got a fairly decent amount of padding on the heel and ankle of the shoe as well. And so the whole point of that is that these pillows are kind of sitting on top of your foot uh, and really kind of hugging your feet across. As well as to help with that sensation, you've also got, you can see here with the laces, uh, you've got this tab here, and as you pull these laces tighter, again, there's some strapping on the inside that really pulls these laces right across your feet. Um, and as well, that helps that kind of lockdown feeling as well, is the fact that the laces are actually quite slim and I would say quite strong as well. So you can really feel that you can pull these laces nice and tight and get a really locked down sensation. Now, I would say of all the shoes that I've tested, these are definitely the closest fitting shoes that I've ever had. If you've got a wired foot, then actually they do a wide fit version as well. So, you know, you're not gonna be restricted. These aren't only for people with slim feet, um, so you can check them out too. But for me personally, I have got quite a slim foot. I'm a UK nine and these fit me true to size. I didn't need to size down or up at all. But as I said, these fit me really, really close. And the whole purpose of that is that Under Armour have done a lot of research and development and a lot of testing, and they believe that the closer a shoe fits you, uh, then the more power you're gonna be able to transfer through the ground and into the golf swing when you're out on the course. Um, and so, yeah, that's the whole purpose of this close fitting shoe. If you don't like the feeling of a shoe that fits really, really close to your foot, then these might not be for you because under Armour have set out with the goal of really getting the shoe to lock down over your foot and they've totally succeeded. That's exactly what this shoe does. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about in regards to how they feel on feet is how they feel underfoot. What's the midsole like? What's the inner sole like? Uh, and how soft are they? Now Under Armour have got in here just a, a combination of uh, a, their regular kind of foam, so it's not their hover foam, it's just a slightly different material. They've also got on the bottom as well, you can kind of see here, uh, you've got this carbon fiber plate as well. Um, and again, that's in there for stability and to really help you power through your golf swing. Um, and we'll come on to the performance and how that affects it in a little bit. What that does mean in regards to the actual feeling underfoot is that these are not the softest golf shoes out on the market underfoot. If you compare them to something like the Adidas Boost, which has got that Boost midsole foam running right the way through the rear and the front of the shoe, um, then you know, that is a very, very soft feeling underfoot. Under Armour aren't going for that because they believe that if a shoe is too soft, then you lose the ability to transfer all of that power up through your golf swing. So they've made a very conscious effort to make a shoe which perhaps feels a little bit firmer compared to other shoes on the market, but allows you to deliver the performance. Now, what I would say is that the shoe is still comfortable, you know? I'm not saying it's uncomfortable, and certainly after you wear it for a few holes, then you get used to it, and I didn't have any problems or aching or anything like that. The shoe was perfectly fine for all the 18 holes. Of, uh, I think I've played about four or five rounds in these now, um, and they're absolutely fine. I didn't have any issues whatsoever. Under Armour have gone with a dual density uh, inner sole here. You've got a slightly firmer part of the insole on the lateral side, and then you've got a soft up foam on the inside there. Um, and again, it's because as they show on the insole there, they've got pressure points that they've sensed uh, and done their research on, and they feel that it needs to be softer on the medial side compared to the lateral side. Now, what I would say in regards to the feeling is that personally, I could really feel that this shoe was firmer on the lateral side compared to the medial side. Um, and I could really feel that difference. Initially, when I was first testing these shoes on an indoor simulator, you know, I was thinking, are these gonna be that comfortable out on the course? But actually, as I say, once you get walking in them, um, once you start getting some heat in them, I suppose, uh, and just kind of, you just get, generally get used to it, they're not uncomfortable. That's not what I'm saying with these shoes, uh, but there is definitely a firmness, certainly to the lateral side, that is just gonna feel a little bit different compared to other shoes. I did stick these shoes on the scales just to kind of see what they weighed. So you can see here that the Speed 4 weighed in at 474 grams on my scales. Now I weighed them against a couple of the other premium shoes on the market. So you can see here that the Adidas Tour 360 XT weighed in at 479 grams. So a little bit heavier than the Speed 4. And then I also put the FootJoy Tour X on the scales as well. And you can see that they weighed it in at 405 grams. So a little bit lighter. So, you know, they're not overly heavy, but they're not the lightest shoes in this kind of category of golf shoes. Right, so we've talked about the technology of the shoe. We've talked about actually how that technology fits and feels on feet. So now let's talk about how it all adds up and how does this perform out on the golf course. 
Now, I've got to say that these are one of the most confidence-inspiring pairs of golf shoes that personally I've ever worn. Um, the way that it really fits and hugs your feet really feels that I can kind of get after it and get at it. They've aimed to say that the shoe just kind of feels part of you, uh, which is maybe kind of weird to say on camera now that I've said it. Uh, but yeah, really trying to be kind of one with your shoe and really trying to help you uh, produce as much force through your golf swing. I haven't slipped once whatsoever um, and I feel nice and connected to the ground. They've got a real kind of stable feeling to the shoe. If you look at the bottom of the shoe in regards to the spikes, so you've got, let's have a look, one, two, three, four, five, five regular regular spikes, um, so they're on the medial side on the front and on the lateral side at the rear, but then you've also got these four spikes there. These are Under Armour's patented rotational resistance spikes or the RST 2.0, this is the second version. And you can see here that they've got a bit of a unique design to them uh, in that they've kind of almost got this wall on the edge. And the whole idea of that is that when you swing uh, on the course, uh, these spikes will cut into the turf and make sure that you're not kind of slipping outwards um, and really allowing you to kind of drive with your golf swing and exert as much of that energy through the ground and into the ball as you hit it during your strike. And they've got a good wide base as well. So if you have a look here on the shoes, you can kind of see that they get kind of bulbousy on these two spikes here, as well as on this side. If I hold them up to the front, you might just be able to see that as well. Um, they don't stick out too much so that it bugs you looking down in the golf swing. I didn't have any issues whatsoever, but it means that you've got a nice wide platform. Again, so the whole point is transferring all that energy through the golf show. Now, in regards to the technical performance of these shoes, uh, I did have the opportunity to go up to Dan Whitaker's golf studio up uh, near Manchester. Um, and not only has he got all the TrackMan facilities so I can check ball speeds and shot lengths and shape and all that kind of stuff, uh, but actually he has a ground force plate as well. So it means that you can see how much force you are managing to put through uh, your shoes when you hit your golf shot. And really, really interestingly, the Speed 4 performed really, really well, uh, ranking top or if not right at the very top in pretty much all of the tests that we've done. So I think there is a lot to say that you should have a golf shoe that fits your feet. Of course, you need to be comfortable and that's got to be the priority because, you know, you're going to be wearing these shoes for four, five, six, whatever, however many hours. So you need to make sure you're comfortable, but also you need to make sure that the shoe is going to work with you and the way that you swing the golf ball because it's actually seeing that you could maybe get some extra distance and yardage as well as consistency if you've got a shoe that is working with you and not against you. In regards to the performance of these shoes, I wore them in very, very dry conditions out on the course. I wore them in some quite heavy rain as well, um, and they performed equally well in both the conditions. Uh, and also my feet stayed nice and dry. You'd expect that because these are kind of incorporated with Gore-Tex technology. Um, so, you know, that's very, very breathable and very, very waterproof as well. So there you go. That's my full review of the Under Armour Speed 4 GTX golf shoes. Let me know down in the comments what you think of them. How do you think you'd get on with these shoes and do you like the look of them? Personally, I think they perform really, really well. If you are looking for a pair of golf shoes that really kind of hugs your feet and helps you aim to deliver as much kind of power through the golf shoes, give you as much traction as possible, um, then you know, you've know you definitely got to consider the Speed 4. I think Under Armour have done really, really well with these shoes. They've set out a goal and I think they've pretty much hit the nail on the head with these shoes. So there you go, that's my full review. Go check out the links below so you can check out some of the comparisons that I'm gonna do with these shoes. I really hope you enjoyed this video today, so hit that like button if you did. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date on all my latest reviews of golf shoes, clothing, and tech right here on Golf Guy Reviews.